Ron, welcome to the show today. Uh, nice to be with you. I am so glad you're here. And I have lots of questions about espalier fruit trees, but let's start off with the simple one. What exactly is espalier? Espalier is a system that uh, basically was developed originally by the Romans. And really it was the French who coined the term espalier and really used it uh, in around the 14 and 1500s in the various chateaus and estates. And then the walls uh, became uh, a support system, if you will, for uh, fruit trees. The question is, how productive are espalier fruit trees? Well, first of all, it starts with understanding um, the type of tree you're growing and then the type of rootstock you're using uh, to be able to grow that tree on. So some people may not be aware that when fruit trees are propagated in the nursery, they're actually propagated on specific types of rootstock. So it's a totally different genetic component. Um, that particularly a below ground component, we call the rootstock, the above ground, we call that the scion. That rootstock can be selected for many purposes, but one of them as a key role would be in espalier would be for dwarfing. So we have a number of rootstocks in apples and pears, sweet cherry, not so much in many others, maybe some plums that can make the canopy of the tree much smaller. Okay, so the idea is that we want to use a rootstock that will keep our tree compact. So we're not fighting with it, you know, to keep it small. What's the worst that could happen if you bought any old fruit tree on a whatever rootstock and it's the wrong rootstock? How, what, what are the biggest problems you could encounter? That's the most common nightmare because there's really nothing you can do about it. Um, but once you get into a garden area and you only have a few trees, and if you just go out and select any tree and not paying attention to the rootstock that's utilized, then what can happen is the tree can be extremely vigorous and then you spend a lifetime of fighting its vigor. And that's something you do not want to do. So whenever someone sends me a question about the trees and how do I get rid of water sprouts, the first thing I do is start asking questions about what rootstock they have the tree planted on and determine whether or not it still can be restored. If it's the wrong rootstock and it's a little too vigorous, that's a problem and you probably need to remove it and start again. We need to think ahead if we want to plant a spalier. We want to make sure our rootstock is dwarfing enough. So we'd do, yeah. we would do that research and we want to make sure it's an appropriate cultivar. Our next question is fantastic to follow up. It's from Barb in Seattle. Barb writes, I work in a public garden and I'm rehabilitating a simple cordon fence of about 15 different apple cultivars. So a spalier cordon style. Mm -hmm. Many of them seem to be tip bearing varieties so right. that they don't bear fruit well when pruned as an espalier. Yeah. So here's her question. My question, do you have a list of apple cultivars that absolutely will not be productive when espalier pruned or conversely, which apple cultivars are most productive when trained as an espalier? Terminal bearers, that's the term we use for uh, terminal bearing. And uh, uh, probably a classic one of that is the Cortland. Another one is the Rome. They would not be as good a variety in that system as varieties like Yala, for example, that will actually produce fruit on last year's lateral wood. Um, you, you want a variety that has a lot of spurs that are, in other words, short shoots that are reproductive. Cortland and Rome are not going to be that way. Barb writes, I recently checked out a 1925 edition of a book called The Lorette System of Pruning, which seemed to focus on cutting the growth back when it was pencil diameter and then almost to the basal leaves, the first set of leaves on each branch. Do you know what are the benefits of this approach to espalier pruning? So the Lorette System, tell us about it. Actually, that's what I use. That's the system I, I actually use. I, I prune back uh, when uh, new branch growth uh, develops uh, eight inches in length. Um, I go back and cut it back to the two basal leaves. And, um, and, and then what that'll do is it'll either 
um, give you a new flush of uh, growth from the leaf axils below. Um, or in some cases, it'll produce new short shoots, in other words, fruiting spurs. So it's actually one of the most um, productive ways to manage um, the espalier system.